Welcome to The Cynical Developer, the podcast that helps you to improve your development knowledge and career through explaining the latest and greatest in development technology and providing you with what you need to succeed as a developer. We've recently launched our Patreon page, which can be found at cynicaldeveloper.com forward slash Patreon. If you aren't familiar with Patreon, it's an easy way for those who are interested in this show to help out by simply pledging a small amount each month in sponsorship. Now that could be as little as $5 a month, which is about £3.80, or as much as you like. You will enable us to dedicate more time creating more content to help you, including videos, more blog posts, and even more shows. So if you can, head over to cynicaldeveloper.com forward slash Patreon and get involved. Before we get into today's episode, I'd just like to apologise for the sound quality of today's episode. It was recorded with uh, a different microphone to what uh, I normally use. So the quality isn't quite what we're used to on the podcast. Um, So as I say, please accept my apologies and uh, I hope you uh, enjoy the episode. And next week we will be back to our normal standard. Thanks. In this episode, I want to challenge what you think practice is and what you were told it was as a child. I want to give you something that will make a whole lot of sense uh, and change the way that you are practicing in the long run for the better. Simply doing is not real practice and in fact it makes you worse. So what is purposeful practice? It's a decisive form of practice. It's done with intention and it has measurable outcomes. What you currently think of practice will fall a little short of uh, of real practice and uh, it's pretty much mindless repetition with no real focus or deliberateness about what you are doing. Purposeful practice requires you to be focused and attentive and it will have measurable outcomes uh, that will improve your performance. An example that explains this would be if I was to go to a tennis court uh, three or four times a week and I would spend a couple of hours just hitting tennis balls back not really think about how I'm doing it. I won't actually get any better. If anything, I'll probably get worse because I'll probably end up injuring myself or something. But uh, purposeful practice on the tennis court would be to go and think, well, I'm going to do a a forehand return or a backhand return. I I don't really know too much about tennis, but thinking about where you were going to hit the ball back to, where it was going to land, that focused deliberateness of what you were doing. is what purposeful practice culminates in. Um, and the measurability there is that you say that you want to hit maybe 10 or 20 balls back and they've all got to hit that left-hand corner um, and, and things like that. So you can actually measure them. So how do you do purposeful practice? I already said that purposeful practice needs to be measurable uh, and done with intent. So before setting out to practice, decide what you want to achieve and how you want to achieve it and understand how you achieve it. As an example, take the likes of Kokatars on Code Wars. Say, for argument's sake, you want to improve your knowledge of regular expressions. You could set yourself a task of completing 10 Katars this week of a certain level. The intent was to learn more about regular expressions. The measurability was the number of Katars that you completed. So you could carry that out several times and you should see your knowledge expanding as you learn from researching what you need to do to complete them and then by comparing your work to to others um, because the likes of Code Wars give you other people's examples so you can see how they did it maybe it was better than yours, maybe it was worse you know, there's also a scoring system where solutions are rated for different criteria such as best solution, cleverest solution um, and things like that another option is to try and build something you have no idea how to do. Build it the best way you can with your current knowledge. Then look at what you've built, discuss it with a more experienced developer, take what they tell you, look into it, learn more about what they've told you and try and understand it. And then implement the changes based off what you've learned. So the intent there is learning how to do that new thing and the measurable part of it is the project actually working and then increasing your efficiencies and the speed of the code and so on and so forth and iterating over that. And you can continue to go back and speak to the uh, more experienced developer and, uh, and iterate on the, uh, on the application. 
Now, to learn more on this topic, I strongly, strongly suggest that uh, you go and read the following book. Either get it on Kindle, Audible. Uh, I know it's a bit old-fashioned. A physical book. And the book is called Peak, Secrets from New Science of Expertise by Robert Poole and Anders Ericsson. It's a fantastic book and outlines this subject in more depth than I have uh, in a greater um, way. It gives you a lot more than, than, than the taste that I'm uh, giving you here today. Uh, and it will change the way that you think um, about what you're doing, the way that you're trying to learn new things, new languages and stuff like that, and, and improve your existing skills. So it's definitely, definitely worth a, uh, a read or a listen. So go get that book. And until next time, I'm James Studdott, and you've been listening to The Cynical Developer talking about purposeful practice. If you have any questions about this or any other episode, then drop us an email, a tweet, or leave a comment on the website where you can find all the resource links, show notes for each episode. And if you enjoy this episode, please leave a review on your favorite podcast platform, iTunes, Stitch, whatever it is, and help the cynical developer to reach more developers around the globe.